Hello from San Antonio. This is Sarantero. Welcome back to another Pick a Card reading. Who is most attracted to you and why? This reading is timeless and for this reading I am using four different decks. Santa Muerte, Smith Waite, Hermetic, and these retro playing cards. I will shuffle and pull four cards from each deck to form four different piles. All of my pick a card readings are for the general collective for entertainment purposes. If anything does resonate, that could be synchronicity, but I do emphasize entertainment purposes. I am always available for private, in-depth, personal readings, which are done on the webcam as pre-recorded videos, all of my information, including my PayPal address, is included in each and every description box. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Uno, dos, tres. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. 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 Bueno, four beautiful piles. This is pile one. This is pile two.
pile three, pile four, cuatro. If you chose pile one, here is your reading. Seven of Wands. Ace of Wands. Six of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles, King of Wands, I'm getting strong Leo vibes, Seven of Wands. So the person who is most attracted to you probably has strong Leo in his or her natal chart. Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and or Mercury. This first quadrant, that's all fire. And they show the King of Wands as Leo in the Hermetic Tarot deck. And in some decks, Seven of Wands is Mars and Leo. Universe, Saturn, that's a fixed modality. Leo, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio. The world, El Mundo. King of Cups, you probably have strong water in your natal chart. Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and Mercury. Ten of Wands. The Sun, more Leo. King of Pentacles, you could have Earth in your chart as well. You're probably a very hard worker. You're probably very work-oriented. You're very focused on your goals. Ace of Cups. You have a lot of compassion. You're probably devoted to a spiritual path. Seven of Swords. In some decks, Seven of Swords is Moon and Aquarius. So just a possibility, you're a person of interest, the person who finds you most attractive, they could have um, Leo and possibly Moon and Aquarius in their natal chart. Knight of Swords. Nine of Wands. This is someone you've known for a while. Page of Pentacles. This person with a strong Leo in their chart, um, probably an extrovert, very warm, very generous to their friends, relatives, loved ones. Um, this person has a really good character. You're similar in that you both have a very strong work ethic. This could be a coworker, possibly. Um, but someone you've probably known for a while and they are super attracted to you because they feel like you take very good care of yourself. Uh, you have a lot of self-respect. You have dignity. You take care of your body. Um, you always look like you're well put together. You put a lot of thought into your appearance. And with these pentacles, you probably have this natural beauty and you have this humility about you. You don't put on pretenses. You don't act like you're all of that. Uh, you're very down to earth. Uh, you're not superficial. You're not shallow. 
you both have a really strong character. You're both good to your friends and loved ones. Uh, you could be especially hardworking. You could be a single parent who doesn't get a lot of help. So I'm seeing fierce independence, really strong work ethic, and you have this heart of gold. You're very good at loving people. You're very good at expressing your love. So your person just feels like you're beautiful inside and out. Um, you probably have gorgeous, healthy hair. That's what I'm picking up. You could be into hiking, jogging. Um, there's some kind of emphasis here on physicality. So I'm seeing exercise. I'm seeing a really toned body. You could be an athlete. Um, you're very driven. You're very focused on your goals. You probably have strong Saturn in your natal chart. You could have a Saturn that makes a lot of aspects. You could have some Capricorn in your chart. I'm seeing possibly Capricorn Cancer, one example of many, Sun and Cancer, um, Capricorn Rising. This person who has the strong Leo in their chart, um, they have a lot of respect for you, a lot of admiration because you've overcome so many obstacles in your life and you don't sit around feeling sorry for yourself. You don't sit around making excuses. You just get shit done. Um, you have a real do-it-yourself approach. There's zero laziness. There's zero entitlement. And this turns your person on beyond belief. They feel like you're very effective at communicating. They feel like you're more intelligent than average. Okay, so yeah, we have eight Capricorn, Saturn, And we have six, Venus. You could have the Saturn-Venus square in your natal chart. If you have any kind of Saturn-Venus contact in your natal chart, such as the square, the opposition, conjunction, trine, even the sextile, I guess, though it wouldn't be as pronounced, um, you're going to have a lot of integrity in your relationships. You're going to show up, you're going to do the work. So this person who is attracted to you, they feel like you're just an ideal person to be in a relationship with. So they are attracted to you for reasons um, I wouldn't say superficial, but aesthetic maybe, and they're attracted to you for, for deeper reasons. Uh, they like your character. They like the way you get stuff done. They like your mind. And they like your body. They like your physical appearance. So 
That's what I have for pile one. If that resonates, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Muchas gracias. And if you chose pile two, we have 10 of cups. Queen of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, Ten of Wands, Four of Swords, Five of Cups, Three of Wands, Two of Wands, Ace of Swords, The Fool, I'm getting strong Aquarius vibes. seeing Capricorn and Aquarius, the Chariot, Six of Cups. The person who is most attracted to you probably sees you as a soulmate. Um, they have these memories of you, so they could be an ex or someone you've just had a really strong, intense connection with. Um, but you resonate with this person. They just feel this strange spiritual kinship with you. Uh, Queen of Swords, again, I am seeing Aquarius. King of Swords, that is rare that two signifiers, two court cards from the same suit come out. So we have Queen of Swords and King of Swords side by side, that's significant. Ace of Pentacles. This is someone who wants to have a relationship with you. This is someone who is obsessively thinking about you. This is someone who sees you as spiritual kin, possibly a soulmate, twin flame. Um, you both have strong air in your natal charts. Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and or Mercury. I see Aquarius because of Four of Swords, four is the number of Aquarius, and the Fool. So that's an obvious connection. I'm also seeing Capricorn because Ten of Wands, we have Saturn. And we have the Queen of Pentacles and Eight of Pentacles. And in some decks, I think Eight of Pentacles is associated with Virgo which makes sense, but uh, I think it was Linda Goodman in one of her books. She said, as far as the hardest workers in the Zodiac go, Virgo and Capricorn are pretty much neck and neck. They're often described as the hardest workers in the Zodiac. So that can be Virgo, but I'm picking up Capricorn. So you and this person who is attracted to you, um, you could have air and earth in your natal charts. For example, in my natal chart, I have Sun and Venus in Aquarius. I have Virgo rising, Virgo moon. My Sun and Venus are in the sixth house, the house of Virgo, and I have Saturn and Gemini in the 10th house. So this person who is most attracted to you They're an extremely hard worker. They could be married or in a happy, stable relationship with someone, but they feel inexplicably drawn to you. They think of you obsessively uh, and they dream of having a relationship with you. 
they dream of coming toward you and creating a relationship. Uh, the Ten of Cups also could just be that this person sees you as an ideal marriage partner. They like the idea of marrying you. But I'm getting a strong sense for Pile 2 that right now it's just a connection. You've not gone from connection to full-fledged relationship yet. But they dream of that with Eight of Pentacles and Ace of Pentacles. They dream of something stable with you. Um... I'm not sure what the Five of Cups is about in this context. It could be that you've been married and divorced at least once. It could be that, strangely, one of the things that draws them to you is that you've been through a lot. You've had a lot of loss in your life. And it gives you this kind of beautiful melancholy and this gravitas. They see you as someone who is not at all superficial or shallow. They don't see you as someone who has had a charmed life. They see you as someone who has endured a lot. Uh, and despite the pain, despite the losses, you still have this very open attitude this attitude of um, just embracing life, embracing your experiences and not, not hiding from life, but you're actively engaging. You're out there, you're taking risks, you're expressing yourself. You could be a writer. This person could be attracted to you because your writing is just absolutely brilliant. You could be an artist, you could be a musician, but with the swords, I'm really seeing... Uh, writing. You're excellent at communicating. You're excellent at expressing yourself. Um, I see this person being in love with your mind. So you see that in all the great artists. Frida Kahlo, uh, Beethoven. I'm talking about, you know, visual artists, musicians, whatever poets like Sylvia Plath, uh, the greatest writers, the greatest musicians, the greatest artists, a lot of times tremendous loss and pain informed their art. And I see something similar here. It could be that you've taken the pain of your life and you turn it into um, fiction, memoirs, poetry, music, art, and this turns your person on. Uh, you're like no one else. You're unique. You're singular. Uh, they see you as a badass. They probably feel something, and they're not sure what it is. They feel this strange connection to you when they look at these pictures of you. They look into your eyes and they just feel lost. There's something mysterious about you and it's impossible to define. This person feels like they can't fathom you, they can't comprehend you. Uh, they look into your eyes and they just feel like you could teach them things. They feel like um, you know a lot of things and you could teach them the things that you know. They see wisdom in you is what I'm picking up. And this strange, uncommon beauty, you may have really unusual eyes, um, very soulful, intense eyes, an intense gaze. You just look like you have been through a lot and you know a lot. So when they look into your eyes, they can see the wisdom, the experiences. They can see your intelligence. And they're very attracted to that. Uh, you're not someone, probably, who puts a lot of extra care into your appearance. If you're a woman, you probably don't 
wear a lot of makeup. You probably don't do much with your hair. Um, I'm getting more of an intellectual vibe. I mean, not to say you can't be an intellectual and care about your appearance, but um, I'm seeing a very natural beauty. This is similar to pile one. You don't put a lot of work into your appearance. You just spend a lot of time <clears throat> creating, writing, um, But what they are drawn to the most, aesthetically, I'm picking up, is your eyes. But this person has a very deep appreciation for your mind and how you express yourself is what I'm picking up. And they want to create a relationship with you. They feel like you would be a good partner. Um, it could be you've had really in-depth conversations and you turn them on mentally, intellectually, like no one else. You've helped this person see the world in a whole new way, is what I'm picking up. Oh, wow, three threes, Jupiter, Sagittarius. This is a higher love. This is a higher vibration of love because it's not based on sexual attraction. There is attraction, uh, but this this is a love affair of the mind. This person is absolutely in love with your mind. So we have six, Venus. This person sees your value. They see your worth, obviously. And we have nine, Mars, Aries. If you're a woman, you could have a really masculine chart. If you have a lot of stuff in Aquarius, Aquarius is a masculine sign. Um, and it's just a fallacy of our culture. Well, I'm in America, but it's, it's a common fallacy in the world, even in the 21st century, that someone who is super driven mentally, intellectually, that's associated with masculinity. And so, you know, it's not true, but... It's just a misconception. The greatest minds have been men. And so you're probably perceived as masculine because I'm seeing someone who has a lot of books. You have a passion for learning, for acquiring knowledge and applying the knowledge. I see you probably writing your own books. Maybe you have a blog, but this person has had in-depth conversations with you is what I'm picking up. And we have one, Leo, the sun. Um, the Leo Aquarius axis is the most creative axis from my perspective in Western astrology. And uh, they just see you as a creative powerhouse They find you fascinating, is what I get for pile two. So if that resonates, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. Muchas gracias. And if you chose pile three, we have nine of wands.
Queen of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, King of Wands, Three of Swords, Saturn and Libra, Four of Cups, Seven of Pentacles, The Devil, The World, Nine of Cups, Three of Wands, Six of Cups, Justice, Queen of Wands, Three of Pentacles, Two of Swords. I'm seeing Sagittarius, I'm seeing Fire. So you could have strong fire in your natal chart, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, and or Mercury. Um, you have this dynamic, charismatic personality. You have a lot of admirers, actually. There are a lot of people who are attracted to you. Uh, you could have your own YouTube channel. You could have a really strong presence on social media, Instagram, Facebook. You could have a big following. Um, you could be into acting. You could be on the stage, but I'm seeing visibility here. I'm seeing that you have a lot of admirers. Um, There's nothing um, subdued or subtle about your personality. You're larger than life, probably an extrovert. And you have this very strong <coughs> sexual quality. This person, if I could narrow it down, I guess, to one person, I'll try to find one person who's most attracted to you. The person who's most attracted to you, they find you very sexually appealing. They have a lot of lust for you, okay? I'm seeing Capricorn with the devil. Seven of Pentacles. We have all the elements here, basically. Uh, do we have water? Yeah, we have Six of Cups. This person could see you as a soulmate. This is someone who's known you for a while. At one point, maybe now, you could be in third party with three of swords. Um, this person could be married to someone else. You could be married to someone else. The world, the fixed modality, Aquarius, Scorpio, Leo, Taurus. Um, this person who is most attracted to you, they're probably very financially secure. They definitely have material abundance. Um, they could have cancer placements in the Hermetic, Four of Cups is Moon and Cancer. They could be moody, they could have mood swings from hell and they like you, they're attracted to you because you're very rarely down. I'm hearing Jump by Van Halen, David Lee Roth. I get up and nothing gets me down. So you're up a lot. You've got this very high vibration. You probably have some Sagittarius in your natal chart. Possibly Sagittarius rising. Um, but this turns this person on because they're at a lower vibration probably. I am seeing mood swings. They could be more um, 
pessimistic, more melancholy, and you're more of an optimist, and you just have this natural ability, you just draw people to you. You've got rock star charisma. Um, money is probably important to both of you. You probably are very hard workers. Um, but I feel like this person who's attracted to you, they have more of a 3D approach. You're more spiritual, probably, than this person. Uh, you're probably on this spiritual path that they can't really comprehend. And they admire you. They feel like you're miles beyond them when it comes to spirituality. And uh, just... 5D stuff in general. Uh, you probably have esoteric knowledge. And this person who is attracted to you, they're more entrenched in the 3D. They're a hard worker. They're very practical. Um, they've worked hard for whatever they have. But... This person probably isn't someone who watches tarot channels at YouTube. They're probably not into tarot and astrology. Um, I don't know what they're interested in. They're interested in you. Um, they could be watching your social media. If you have a YouTube channel, they probably watch that and they're just in awe of you. The way you put things together, the way you articulate, the way you express yourself. They feel like they're one of your many fans. They could see you as a soulmate. They feel this connection, but they don't understand it. They don't understand it because the two of you are so different, but they feel this magnetic pull to you. So it goes beyond the sexual and the obvious. Um, they may not believe in soulmates. They just know they feel this strong pull toward you. You resonate with this person. This person has a hard time communicating they have a hard time expressing their deep feelings. So, they've probably never told you, I am crazy about you. They don't operate like that. Uh, they have to really trust someone and know that they're not going to get rejected. They're not going to just put themselves out there. They're not going to wear their heart on their sleeve is what I'm picking up. So we have everything, but I do feel like you have strong fire. Uh, your person could have a complicated astro combo. One example of many, they could have Sun and Taurus, Libra rising, Sagittarius moon, something like that. But they do not express their deep emotions. Uh, you challenge this person. They feel like you're very hard to handle. They feel like if they were to really get involved in a full-fledged relationship with you, it would require a lot of energy because you're just, you're up. You're always on the go. You're always uh, making things happen, working, creating, sharing, expressing. And this person's more subdued. They're more low-key. They're more, um, more, um, I don't know. They just, they want to put in their 40 hours. You know, they probably work some job. It could be blue collar, possibly white collar. I don't know. But they like to work and then go home and just relax. You know, watch television. Um, maybe play video games. Uh, 
they don't have the drive that you have. They lack your ambition. So, uh, they're a hard worker. They have material abundance, but when they are not working, when they're at home, they just want to relax, you know, so they don't necessarily have that, that drive, that push that you have. Um, basically you just have a lot more energy than this person is what I'm picking up. It could be one of the reasons why this person has money is they married someone who has money. They could have come into an inheritance, but I don't see them having this crazy gung-ho ambition. I don't see them having this defining passion. I don't see them uh, being defined by anything like music or having a platform on social media, nothing like that. And you do is what I'm picking up for pile three. You have some kind of platform, some kind of presence, some kind of defining passion. And this person gets exhausted just looking at you, just looking at what you put out there. They think, God, how do they do it? So they like their naps. They like their chill time. Huh, Aquarius, Aquarius and Capricorn, four and eight, the numbers of karma and fate, according to Linda Goodman's star signs. Two, Cancer, the moon, one, Leo, the sun. So you could have some polarity going on here. There could be some opposition in your natal chart. You're probably a lot more masculine and your person's a lot more feminine. Uh, they're more nurturing. They're more focused on relationships and you're more focused on your presence, getting stuff out there, making stuff happen, speaking to an audience, uh, sharing your gifts, your photography, your art, your music, your passion. This person's more private. They don't put their stuff out there. So that's what I have for pile three. If that resonates, let me know in the comments. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Click that bell for notifications, which is gracias. And if you chose pile four, we have 10 of wands. I love that image. I love the colors. Seven of Cups, Knight of Swords, Five of Swords, Queen of Pentacles, Four of Wands, the Star. La Estrella. Nine of Wands, Sagittarius. King of Wands. Queen of Cups. We got some signifiers. Knight of Swords, Queen of Cups, King of Wands, Queen of Pentacles. The Devil, El Diablo. That would be a great thumbnail. The devil with Coco Loco, Chongo behind. <laughs> okay. The emperor, big king daddy. Two of wands. This person who is most attracted to you, they have crazy lust for you. 
They fantasize about you. Um, they fantasize about marrying you, is what I'm picking up. They see you as their optimal life partner, their perfect spouse. But they feel like it's impossible. Strength. Ace of Swords. I see sexting. The Wheel of Fortune, Sagittarius. Strong fire, fire dominates this. Wow. All this fire, all this lust, all this passion. We have the Leo Aquarius axis, strength, Leo the star, Aquarius. There could be opposition. You could have Mars Venus, which is one of the hottest things to have in sinistry. For example, uh, my second ex-husband, my son's father, his Mars in Leo at 16 degrees exactly opposes my Venus in Aquarius, 16 degrees. That is a white aspect so you could have something similar you could have the Mars Venus opposition um, but I definitely see polarity here with the air Knight of Swords the star and the King of Wands strength the Leo so this person has crazy lust for you uh, and this person's a hard worker. They're always on the job. Go, 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 go. I see them drinking energy drinks, coffee, uh, while they're driving 80 miles an hour down the freeway. They've got uh, Red Bull in one hand and Facebook in the other. They're on Facebook. They're driving dangerously. But they know what they're doing. They're they're very adept. They're very good at multitasking. Um, they probably have strong Gemini as well. So I like to just throw out possible combos. One possible combo, this person who is most attracted to you could have Sun and Leo, Gemini rising, and a Capricorn moon. Okay. Uh, this person is intense but they can also let go and really have fun. They can throw down, they can party. Uh, they probably have a lot of friends. Um, I see this person being very loud. When they walk into a room, they make their presence known. This is a loud person. They like to play their music loud. Um, they don't need a microphone. Their voice booms, their voice carries. They are attracted to you because you're pretty much the opposite of that. Um, you do have some fire in your chart, you're fun. Uh, you can sing karaoke if you want to, but most of the time, you're in this air energy of being in your head, being quiet, being serious, being focused on the task at hand, uh, whatever idea you're thinking about. You probably are into astrology. And you have a lot of self-knowledge. You could be into the MBTI, you know, the 16 personality types. Uh, your personality type could be something like uh, ISTP. So you're serious, you're focused, you have self-knowledge. You've done a lot of work on yourself. You know who you are. You're clear on what you want. You're probably very go-oriented. Because the devil, you know, it's described a lot as a card of, bondage, addiction, that's the lower vibration of Capricorn and Saturn. And really Capricorn and Saturn have nothing to do with addiction. That's Neptune, that's Pisces. At its highest vibration, uh, the devil is about self-knowledge and self-mastery. 
you know, in that little fairy tale. Well, not to insult anyone, but I was brought up Southern Baptist in Texas. So in Genesis, that thing about uh, the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve, um, God in Genesis says, you can eat any of the trees in the garden, but don't eat the tree, don't eat fruit from the tree of knowledge because you can't be smart. You have to be a stupid human so I can control you. Um, so the devil is about knowledge. Being really smart, really adept, being high functioning. Saturn is all about being high functioning learning the lessons, karma, whatever, learning the lessons. Oh, it's 11-11, make a wish. I wish I had a million subscribers. Um, okay, learning lessons and applying the lessons to your life because Capricorn's all about practicality. And to go off on a little bit of a tangent here, um, you know, Capricorn is the mountain goat. It's, it's climbing the mountain. It may take a while to get to the top, but eventually Capricorn will make it to the top. I've had a couple of comments from subscribers saying slow and steady wins the race because it's it took me so long to get to 10,000 subscribers. And there are people who have not been at YouTube for half the time that I've been here. It'll be, I think, two years in November. And they just zoom to 20,000 subscribers, whatever. But I told my ex-husband recently, he's a Leo, um, I told him that for years I felt like I was standing at the bottom of a mountain with a plastic spoon in my hand. And I thought, how can you climb a mountain or move a mountain with a plastic spoon? This is useless. In other words, I felt powerless. I felt inept. I felt like my goals were well beyond my reach. I told him the other day, I said, I feel like I'm finally on the mountain at the age of 47. That's Capricorn, that's Saturn. Long, hard-earned, delayed gratification. It's not overnight success. And that's funny. We have the devil, Capricorn, with the star, Aquarius. Um, Aquarius is not really about overnight success either, but it can be about wild luck. Uh, if you have Uranus aspecting Jupiter in your chart, like I don't know, a Uranus-Jupiter conjunction or a trine, tight, tight or five degrees or less, you could experience an overnight success. Um, so that's an interesting dichotomy there working hard for something, but then when things start to align and fall in place, you have this tremendous success. So this person is attracted to you because you do have knowledge. You know yourself. You know what you want. You have very clear goals. You probably have very lofty goals, very lofty ambitions, and that's very admirable. Uh, you're excellent at communicating. You speak with precision and intelligence. You probably do not enjoy small talk. Um, when you're on social media, you use it with a purpose. You're not just posting pictures of your breakfast or uh, kitten memes or whatever. You probably use social media to promote something, to promote a business, to... Uh, share your ideas, your politics, maybe, I don't know, your art, um, poetry. You're very idea focused. You're probably an intellectual. I'm seeing strong air. You could have Mercury and Aquarius, Gemini, Libra. So this person can see themselves marrying you. They see you as the ideal marriage partner. You inspire this person. You make them feel emotions. Uh, 
if you write poetry, they could read your poems and get tears in their eyes is what I'm picking up. And you've probably known each other for a while and you could have a battle of the wills. You know, your egos could clash because you both have strong personalities. They're more of an extrovert, you're more of an introvert, but you both have very strong personalities. You could have Sagittarius rising. Um, you could have a Jupiter that makes a lot of aspects. Oops. Well, gosh, where did it, oh, there it is. I've got a vacuum, this floor, it's filthy. Okay, six, Venus. They see your value, they see your worth. You dazzle this person. Four, Aquarius, and six again, and Jupiter, Sagittarius, the highest vibration. This has the potential to be big love. Four of Wands. Delayed gratification for pile four. If that resonates, let me know in the comments. And that concludes this Pick a Card reading. Thank you all so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, clicking the bell for notifications, sending you all massive love and light from San Antonio.